Hey guys, it's uh, it's me, Daniel. Um, a lot of you guys were asking how to do the uh, the two-step rev limiter that I uh, posted on Facebook and Instagram. <clears throat> so I thought I'd go ahead and show you um, how you could do that with both an automatic transmission and a manual transmission. Uh, there's a little bit of caveats between both of them, and um, mostly it's going to be dealing with the tuning, especially if you're an automatic. Uh, you don't even really need uh, some of the hardware wiring um, that's only there to engage the actual rev uh, ECU's rev limiter so that uh, because when you have a manual vehicle and the clutch is in there's no load on the engine but when you have the automatic you're in gear and you're flooring it so there's still a little bit holding it back which is what's gonna uh, be able to keep your RPMs down um, this is mostly used for turbo vehicles. Uh, you could set it up as like a launch control if you had a manual vehicle and you wanted to hold it at a certain RPM uh, so you can start out. Um, so uh, let's get into it. I'm going to show you guys how to do the, uh, the, the first step, which is what you're going to want to do with an automatic transmission. So you're going to go want to get into HP tuners, which is what I use. I'm not sure... Um, what EFI Live uses, and you're going to want to set these intake manifold changeover tables. What these do is they change from the idle spark advance to the main spark advance. So you're going to want to change this, the main TPS, from I think it's like about around 2 or 3%. You're going to want to change it up to 100% because you're going to be uh, flooring the throttle. And then you're going to want to change the max speed. Um, it's going to be, I think, around 120 something you're going to want to bring it down to 2 miles per hour so that once you let off um, the clutch or the brake, um, depending on whether you have a manual or an automatic vehicle, um, it's it, it's going to go from this idle spark table to the main spark advance table. So for a um, automatic car, you're going to want to go into the in-drive table and you're going to want to pick the RPM that you want to... Um, engage your two steps so say you want to have it start at 2400 and just kind of maintain that rpm so you can build your boost off the line and uh, everything so you're going to want to highlight this and you're going to want to set it to negative 15 to negative 25 i found i pretty much have to set it to negative 25 or um the the boost creeps the rpm up so you set that to negative 25 for a automatic vehicle now for a manual vehicle like I have you're going to want to leave this table alone and you're going to want to change the in park table to like I have it set I want to have mine around 2800 rpm is where I want it to engage the, uh, the two step <clears throat> now there's another table in here under retard which is going to be the max, uh, I mean the minimum spark advance. So this is usually set around 0 or, or 10 or so, or I've even seen it about negative 10. And you're going to want to go in here and set it to negative 25 so they can actually go down to that low of a um, RPM. Otherwise, uh, it won't actually engage it. Um, one of the, the interesting things I found, I have the 0411 PCM, I'm not sure if this does it with the P59, the newer ones, the I think 03 to 07 ECUs, but with the 0411 with the flex fuel tune, the, the 2002 Tahoe tune, um, the, the flex fuel spark actually gets added after everything, so I found when I'm at my 2800 there's an extra 13 um, degrees of spark added um, which is kind of a bummer because that means the minimum spark I can get is right around um, what is that like uh, right around 12 like negative 12 um, degrees of advance um, the, the the reason why we set it to only a maximum of negative 25 is because if you look in these these tables they only go to negative 25 to 60, so that's about as low as you can go with the stock ECUs. For an automatic vehicle, this would probably be alright. You could probably, you pretty much could just stop here and uh, check it, make sure it works. 
um, while you're holding your foot on the brake and everything and it, sh and it should work and it'll disengage after you start moving. For a manual car, you're going to have to go a little bit further. Um, you're going to have to set up this, uh, the Prindle selector, um, which obviously a manual vehicle doesn't have, but when you're using a... Uh, well, um, but when you're wanting to engage the two-step, you can actually use this to switch between the, the tables. So you can leave your in-drive the same and set your in-park to where you want it to engage. Um, the other big reason you want to do this is to actually set this RPM limiter to where you want it. So I have mine set at 2800 for um, that RPM. And I have, the way I have it set up is I have the... A and I'll pull this back a little bit the A this is for park the A and the P I have those wired to ground all the time and then I'm using drive 3 um, to get rid of it to switch the tables over because um, it has the middle two on whereas the other two are off so I have those connected to this switch right here to activate my uh, two step so when this is on, which it is right now, that means the uh, the two steps going to be not activated because it's going to see this in the drive table. But then when you um, put it down, it's going to be activated. I still need to wire this um, in parallel with my uh, my clutch position um, signal um, so that I can actually when I push the clutch in and I once I let out the clutch, it'll uh, still work because. Um, <laughs> Having to worry about gears and then turning this off and all that stuff is uh, is is rather difficult. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, post up a kind of a schematic of how to wire this up for a manual vehicle. But the other thing you're going to have to do to actually get this table to work is you're going to have to go into your trans and set the trans type to a non-electric auto. Otherwise, um, the um, the ECU always just expects it's, that it's in drive and it disregards the Prindle input altogether. So that was how to create kind of a crude rev limiter um, using the stock PCM uh, using HP tuners for um, Chevy vehicles or LS motors. Um, let me know let me know what you guys think in the comments or if you have any questions um, any advice uh, any ideas for me to try out um, I'd love to hear them uh, go ahead and subscribe I'm gonna be posting some more uh, videos um, sorry it's taking so long to get the um, injector testing video out I'm probably gonna be doing some more injector testing here pretty soon uh, for my friend since we're building him a 5.3 yeah, just uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see uh, more videos of me um, building motors, swapping, swapping them in vehicles. Uh, we're doing a, a 5.3 swap in my friend's truck. Um, he's planning on getting the 4L80 and doing turbos eventually. I'll probably set up that uh, launch control um, with his as well. Um, yeah, have a good day, guys.